So I wanted to take a few minutes with this video to talk about four interesting PlayStation 5 stories and if you could hit that like button on the video, thank you to those that do it and as always, it's very much appreciated. Now the stories I wanted to cover today includes great news for PlayStation 1 games on PlayStation 5, my reaction to the state of play from yesterday and the highlights there, a performance boost is coming to a major PlayStation 5 title and PlayStation VR 2 release date information seems to have slipped. First, from 1 to 10, what would you rate the state of play from yesterday? I would personally put it at a 9 out of 10. It was a very solid showing for PlayStation VR 2 games and new titles for PlayStation 5 and a confirmation of the first PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium title, which surprised me. <laughs> so comment below, from 1 to 10, what is your rating for yesterday's state of play? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, diving into the first story of the video, yesterday's state of play. So I pointed out on Twitter a week ago, that Sony doesn't ever announce a state of play a week ahead of time. They usually do that for larger events to give people more time to be notified and ready to watch the show. It seems like I was on point there because this was not your regular state of play. Big, hit, uh, big hitters were present at the show. The show started off with Resident Evil 4 Remake, which was on that supposed leaked list of games. But as I said on that video, someone probably created that list, but uh, put in logical guesses as to what would be at the show, what could possibly be there. Looking at the trailer, I honestly thought it was the Last of Us remake at the beginning, but Resident Evil 4 to start the show and not end it was huge. Then they blasted me with VR2 content for the game, which I hope means the whole game is playable in VR, but regardless, that was unexpected. Resident Evil 4 remake comes out on March 24th, 2023, which was also a strong way to start off that trailer. Then they went to Resident Evil 8 PSVR 2 uh, port. This was <laughs> hitting me back to back. First Resident Evil 4, now Resident Evil 8. I've already played Resident Evil 8, but I will be replaying it in PlayStation VR 2. It's essentially a new game in VR. Then we got a new trailer for the, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2. I'm already sold on the game here. Love the first game and we'll be getting this on PlayStation VR 2. We'll talk about this part of the state of play more so in a bit. Moving on from there, No Man's Sky is coming to PlayStation VR 2, which looks great. And then we got we saw the big one, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which looks gorgeous. And that's the thing here with these PlayStation VR 2 games. They looked amazing on your flat screen TV. And for people who have used VR, uh, VR before, VR games look much better in the headset. So to see Horizon Call of the Mountain look amazing, look as good as it did in that trailer, I'm ready to be blown away when the game when I can personally play the game myself and have that headset on. The trailer also seems to confirm it's not on rails, but I will say it looks to be a linear game and not open world like the current Horizon games, which I'm fine with. It's a side story, not a full Horizon game, so I'll take the uh, the linear approach. They also revealed a big update for Horizon 2, which we'll talk about in a bit. From there, we got a trailer for Spider-Man Remastered coming to PC, which is great for PC players to enjoy this masterclass title. It drops this August 12th for PC. It was also revealed afterwards that Miles Morales will also be coming to PC this fall, but no date there, it seems. Uh, but it'll probably be... October, I'm guessing. This to me looks like a good sign for Spider-Man 2 dropping next year on PlayStation 5. I just hope we see more of it sometime this year to give me more confidence that the game comes out next year. But it's good to see Spider-Man uh, Remastered and Miles coming to PC this year because that's the same thing they did with uh, Horizon as well. So we'll see how that plays out. Next up was Stray, which like Resident Evil 4 Remake and Resident Evil 8 VR, uh, VR support, uh, we're also on that supposed list, that leaked list. But again, logical guesses there. I even said for this one, I would assume it would be there since the leaked release date is in July, which was confirmed. It's July 19th. And the other big news is that it's coming to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium at no extra, uh, no extra charge. That's big. This is a title people are excited for and will, were willing to pay money for. So it's nice to see Sony adding it to the service. From there, we got Callisto Protocol, which I'm surprised isn't talked about more so. That's a huge game uh, to be there for the first time, for the first time to see that trailer. From the creator of Dead Space, we got a proper trailer for his next franchise, and it looks amazing. And man, if it was in VR, 
that would be terrifying. We got a release date uh, for there for that for the game there as well, which is December second this year, just in time to scare you for the holidays. <laughs> From there, we got two indie titles, Roller Drome and Eternites. Then another big game got its first trailer, which was Street Fighter VI coming in 2023. I'm not a big fighting game fan, but I know a lot of people who. Uh, our fans of the franchise and fans of fighting games have been waiting for this and the response to the trailer seems to be good so far. Next were two more indie titles, a confirmation of Tunic coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 this September 27th and Seasons got another trailer with an autumn release date for this year. Then they closed out the show with another big hitter with Final Fantasy 16, a new trailer for that game and a confirmation it's coming summer 2023. The trailer looked great, and I'm already a Devil, uh, Devil May Cry fan, and Final Fantasy 16 seems to be up my alley here, so I'm there day one, especially after the confirmation that the combat director for Final Fantasy 16 worked on Devil May Cry 5, so that's a big plus, but that was the show and it was great. Now diving into the second story of the video, the PlayStation VR 2 release date. So this will be quick, but going back to the Saints and Sinners section of the State of Play, in the PlayStation blog, it states this, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution is currently set to come to PlayStation VR in late 2022 and PlayStation VR 2 in 2022. Uh, 2023. This had many believing this is pretty much a confirmation that PSVR 2 is coming in 2023, even me, but then I started to think Sony validates these blog posts more most likely before posting them. Why would they be okay with the game seemingly leaking the PSVR 2 release window? If that were the case, then they would be fine to just come out and say that PlayStation VR 2 is coming out in 2023. No Man's Sky would also just say 2023 for PlayStation VR 2. So would Resident Evil 8, the port, would just say 2023. Now, I'm not saying PlayStation VR 2 is for sure coming out this year, but I think this just means that Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 for PlayStation VR 2 comes out next year. Remember, the studio confirmed this game comes for play, uh, is coming for PlayStation uh, VR 1 this year, so I wouldn't be surprised if they need more time to make the game for PlayStation VR 2 alongside making it for PlayStation VR 1. We'll see of course, but you guys let me know if you think this means PlayStation VR 2 is coming out in 2023 or not. Let me know down in the comments below. Now diving into the third story of the video, great news for PlayStation 1 games on PlayStation 5. So this is another quick story, one of the big issues that has been a highlight for PS1 games in the Asian market launch was that they were PAL versions of those respective games, meaning they ran at 50Hz. This provided for a choppy experience for each of those games playing them on PlayStation 5. There were some who were worried this would transfer over to other markets, but it's been confirmed thanks to the Japanese PlayStation Plus launch this past week that the NTSC 60 hertz versions of those games will be available too. 60 hertz games here run at 30 frames per second versus the 50 hertz PAL versions that run at 25 uh, frames per second. So it's smoother game uh, smoother gameplay overall for these games. Honestly. I personally didn't look at these details for PlayStation 1 games as much, but I'm wondering why Sony hasn't pushed for 60 frames per second support for these titles. Maybe I'm missing something here, but regardless, this is good news for us in the West since we'll most likely get the 60 hertz versions of these games as well. And now diving into the final story of the video, the performance boost update to a big PlayStation 5 title. So it's been revealed that Horizon 2 got an update yesterday that brought with it New Game Plus Ultra Hard Mode Respec, which allows you to redistribute your skill points, meaning if you haven't maxed out one of the trees and you're wondering how it would be if you did, you can move your points from one place to another. They also revealed that you can customize your armor cosmetics, meaning if you like the benefit of one armor but you want it to look like another you can do that there were other updates as well that you can check out for yourself i'll have the blog linked below but the big two were mentioned here where they stated this in the playstation blog we've revamped temporal anti-aliasing to improve the visual fidelity of our performance mode on playstation 5 and rendering on ps4 pro we're already working on an upcoming patch which will include vrr support and a 40 fps mode so stay tuned for more so right now, the performance mode doesn't have that shimmering that people 
uh, mentioned back at launch. And honestly, playing it myself, it's hard to tell the difference between performance and fidelity mode, which is crazy to say. Regardless, fidelity mode is getting the 40 FPS mode anyway later on, which is also something I've personally asked for. They're also bringing VRR support, meaning we might get an uncapped, uh, we might get uncapped modes in the game. So, for example, performance mode could run higher than 60 FPS, and who knows, uh, fidelity mode could touch that 50 FPS frame rate. Overall, great news for Horizon fans, but you guys let me know if this makes you want to jump back into Horizon 2 or not. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. As it always helps, and subscribe if you're new. I got new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now, I'll check you guys out on the next one. And welcome back to the after show. This is the part of the video where we have a little fun down in the comments below. If you're old, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. For today's thing, what I want you guys to do is to body, obliterate, destroy, and overall harass the comments section with bring on the weekend. Obviously, it's been a solid week for PlayStation fans. I'm ready for the weekend to play some games with my buddies. If you are as well, destroy the comments section with bring on the weekend. And I'll definitely heart those comments like I always do because I appreciate everybody who stays at the end of my videos. And now I'll check you guys out on the next one.